All right, apologies to everyone. Just want to check to make sure everyone can hear me okay. Mic check one, two. All right. Yep, there we go. Me. All right, volume is coming in there. Okay. Um, Presenters, please be mindful that uh, you're not double muted in WebEx there, so make sure that on WebEx you're also unmuted as well. Uh, the dreaded double mute that unfortunately happens <laughs> sometimes. So uh, welcome everyone. Thank you all for joining today. My name is William Moore with JDP's Intact. We're going to go ahead and get started with today's web event. Uh, for those who have joined, please note a few things. Uh, I've included a multimedia viewer that will allow for individuals who may be deaf or hard of hearing to join, uh, that you are able to see the live captioning of today's web event. So please be mindful that you are um, that you are indeed able to access that, uh, again, if you're deaf or hard of hearing. Uh, I've done a file transfer um, box that should pop up on your screen, and it will allow for you to get access to the PDF of today's uh, web event. Uh, if you're unable to access it through there, please note that you will indeed also get a uh, access to the uh, to a Google link drive where you can click on that button or you can copy and paste it into your web browser and be able to access the PDF of the document there as well. So that being said, it's 11, uh, a little bit over 11, so we're going to go ahead and get started again. Welcome to everyone to today's grad solicitation webinar, the OJJDP FY 2021 Title II Formula Program uh, Solicitation Part 1, Programmatic. My name is William Moore with OJJDP's Intact. And before we get started, just a couple of quick housekeeping slides to keep in mind. Please note that today's web event is being recorded. Note that the web event is archived on OJJDP's multimedia page. On this page, you can also view other webinars related to juvenile justice and child victimization prevention related topics. For the supporting materials related to any of those webinars, please reach out to the OJJDP TTA Help Desk for assistance. If you're having any trouble downloading the event materials, again, that I've placed in that file transfer uh, box there, please uh, be sure to go into the chat and look out for the Google Drive link there, where you can copy and paste that, again, into your uh, browser of your choice, I would suggest Google Chrome, and you'll be able to access the PDF of today's web event. If you are continually getting issues, you can just reach out to the OJJDP TTA Help Desk uh, for any of the materials related to today's web event. For optimal audio, we do ask that individuals dial out through the WebEx uh, system through your phone line. When you're connected, you will see a phone icon if you're dialed through your phone, or you will see a headset icon appear next to your name in the participants panel there. Again, please note that all participants have come in on mute for today's web event. If you are experiencing any technical difficulties during today's web event, please send me uh, the host a private chat, and I'll be more than happy to help troubleshoot. Now, during today's web event, we will be taking questions from the audience. Those questions, again, will be related to the content related to today's uh, grant solicitation webinar. What you will do is go to your chat window, type in your question. Before you send your question, please make sure in the two box you have selected either everyone or all panelists. Again, make sure you select everyone or all panelists to make sure that we uh, get your questions for today's web event. And then after you do that, you will hit send or click enter and it will send in your question. So again, make sure that you select uh, to everyone or all panelists prior to sending in your question. Um, so help us count. If you're viewing by yourself or alone, there's no need to type anything at this time. However, if you're viewing in a group uh, or if there's multiple individuals with you, please go to the chat window and type in the total number of additional people in the room with you today. So if it's yourself and your program manager, you will put plus one, meaning you do not include yourself. So please go to the chat window, select everyone or all panelists and type in the total number of additional people in the room with you today. If you're viewing by yourself, there's no need to type anything at this time. That being said, I'm going to go ahead and turn today's presentation over to Nicole for our web event. Nicole, you now have control of the presentation. 
and take it away. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much, William. Good morning, everyone. OJJDP is excited to welcome you to today's FY21 Title II Solicitation Webinar. Um, but before we get started um, with today's content, we want to um, allow for D Dr. Tanine Bradford um, to give some opening remarks uh, before we get started. So, uh, Tanine, can you come up mute and say hello? Hello, good morning, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Great, great. I echo your excitement, Nicole. Welcome everyone to um, finally <laughs> the Title 221 solicitation webinar. Um, we're, we are uh, as excited to finally be able to engage you in the process and help you um, uh, figure out what the requirements are and how to respond. I don't want to take up the time, um, but I am just really super excited to, to, to initiate today and then we'll have a, another one on Thursday. Um, uh, we are also looking into trying to have a separate session or follow-up TA for those who may need some assistance with navigating just grants. I've heard loud and clear from several um, state leadership heads that um, there were concerns about you know, how to navigate that system. Um, heard, and we are working through um, uh, some scenarios that we could be of assistance to you. Uh, hope that this uh, webinar will be informational to you. Looking forward to engaging you um, in future discussions. Have a good webinar, Nicole. Thanks so much, Timmy. All right, everyone. Today's presentation will focus on the programmatic requirements of the Title II solicitation. We are planning to have part two of the series on Thursday, June 17th from 11 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. to review the compliance portion of the solicitation. So please mark your cal calendars for that or register if you have not done so yet. Today's presenters with, with myself are Melissa Harris and Cara Blair. At the end of the session, there will be a Q&A as William mentioned earlier for any questions you may have, but specific questions to your state or directly to your specific application can also be directed to the NCJRS Response Center or directly to your SHRAD program manager. We are here to help and to provide any assistance where needed. So let's go ahead and jump into today's content. So you have here our organizational chart. Um, the Office of Justice Programs uh, is, a component, is a component within the Department of Justice. OJJDP is also a component within OJP that works to prevent juvenile delinquency improve the juvenile justice system, and protect children. There are six total components within OJP. Within OJJDP, we have the State Relations and Assistance Division, which is the programmatic lead of the Title II formula program. And many of you are familiar with your program manager who works in SHRAD. The Office of Juvenile Justice and Delinquency Prevention envisions a nation where our children are free from crime and violence. If they come into contact with the justice system, the contact should be both just and beneficial to them. Our mission is to provide national leadership, coordination, and resources to prevent and respond to juvenile delinquency and victimization. OJJDP supports the efforts of states, tribes, and communities to develop and implement effective and equitable juvenile justice systems that enhance public safety, ensure youth are held appropriately accountable to both crime victims and communities, and empower youth to live productive, law-abiding lives. So today's agenda, um, we've already heard from Dr. Bradford uh, regarding opening remarks, but we're gonna also discuss solicitation deadlines as well as required documentation for the solicitation. We'll also briefly go into some links for Just Grants. As we know, this is a, a new system for us all. So we will go over some resources and links that um, can assist you as you're working through the solicitation.
Our objective today is to provide a general overview of the FY21 Title II Formula Program Solicitation. And just want to reiterate, we're going over majority of the content that is pro provided in the solicitation, but just giving a little bit more context and expounding on specific parts that uh, we find to be uh, probably more, more focused for, for the uh, applicants. So with that, I am going to kick it over to my co my colleague, Cara Blair, um, and she's going to go through the solicitation web link and some of the deadline information. Cara? My apologies, I forgot to unmute, I was speaking. Um, thank you, Nicole. Um, good morning, everyone. As a reminder, the Grants.gov registration deadline is Tuesday, June 29th, 2021 at 11.59 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Registering in Grants.gov can take up to a week to two weeks to process, so please do not wait until the last minute to complete your registration. As a reminder, Grants.gov is a separate system for, from just grants, so it will be a two-step process this year. If you have any issues with Grants.gov or any issues with just grants, please notify your assigned program manager ahead of time so we can possibly resolve these issues and capture them in case it's an ongoing um, issue. Also, the application deadline in just grants is Tuesday, July 13th, 2021 at 11.59 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. That also includes your compliance monitoring data, data that you all will input in the compliance monitoring tool. So we have two separate deadlines here. We have the grants.gov registration deadline, which is Tuesday, June 29th, and then we have the just grant slash compliance monitoring tool deadline which is when you'll finalize your application, and that's due July 13th, 11.59 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Next, I will go over some, the overview of the Office of Juvenile Justice Delinquency Prevention Grant Application Process, and also the documents that you'll need for your final submission in Just Grants and the Compliance Monitoring Tool. So I stated again, complete application deadline is July 13, 2021. You'll hear me say this numerous times to my colleagues throughout this webinar. Some of the documents that should be included within your application that you will submit in Just Grants is your year one eligibility assurance and certification form, your project abstract, your three year state plan, which is, which is required from states and territories, which is also known as your proposal narrative, your state advisory group roster, also known as your SAG, and then your budget, which is a placement holder. You can use your budget that you use in FY 2020, which will include your budget narrative and a detailed budget worksheet. But once you are awarded, you will have to submit a revised budget with the actual correct numbers. Continuing what's included in your application is the financial management questionnaire, your, cert, your state agency contact information, disclosure of lobbying, lobbying activities form, disclosure of pending applications. These forms you can get on grants.gov and also the OJJDP website. Request for waiver of a pass-through requirement if applicable, and research and evaluation information if applicable. As Nicole stated before, um, there will be a more in-depth part two about the compliance monitoring part um, on Thursday, June 17th from 11 to 12.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you have not registered for that webinar, we can put the registration link inside the chat box, 
or if you have any issues registering for the webinar, please reach out to your assigned program manager. But the compliance monitoring data that is due in the compliance monitoring tool is due July 13th, 2021. And some items that will be required are the training policy certification, your compliance monitoring data certification, rule removal exception certification if applicable, um, your racial ethic disparity core requirement plan data and supporting documentation. And continuing on other items that are will be needed to be submitted to the compliance monitoring tool is your complying, mo compliance monitoring um, universe, your compliance monitoring plans and resource certifications. As I've stated before, there will be more of an in-depth webinar for part two of this process, June 17th, which is a Thursday from 11, 11 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And also all the, the documents that are part of your application are listed here in this that it will send you to the OJJDP um, website. All the files, the certification, the resources forms are all here on the OJJDP public website. You could just click on the link, save the form and start filling um, them out. I will now pass it over next to um, Nicole McRae. All right, thanks, Cara. So I think I, I, I'm also monitoring the chat as, as we're working through, and I think I, I saw a question regarding the abstract. So just to give you a, a little bit more uh, context around what's required for the abstract. Um, as part of your submission in just grants, you are required to submit a, a project abstract. The same requirements stand for the proposal abstract. So you'll see project, program, and proposal interchange within the solicitation and in some of the language. Um, just know it's the same same portion of the solicitation. So, um, you know, I know it can be confusing when you're using different different uh, terms, but just want to make make note of that. No more than 400 words summarizing the proposed project, um, also including primary activities, products and deliverables, the service area, and who will benefit from the proposed project. Again, this will be in the web-based form within Just Grants and not an attachment. So in, in previous years in GMS, uh, you would normally attach a project abstract um, to your application. Well, now within Just Grants, you're able to fill it out. So one thing I would uh, lean into or, or that might help you with this piece is you can go ahead and draft up your project abstract outside of the system. And then once you're ready to move move through the actual solicitation, you can paste it into, into the web-based form that's that's shown. So that's that's a good way to, you know, make sure you have all of your information first and then uh, you can transfer it over into Just Grants. I don't believe, I think, I, I gotta double check on the ca character count. I don't think that there's a, a, a limit. So uh, it, may, it may be 4,000 characters or something to that effect, but we'll double check on that. But you shouldn't have any issues. And if you encounter them, um, as we mentioned, we'll always refer you to either the Just Grant Support Help Desk or to your program manager. All right, the, the biggest and most important part of, of the Title II solicitation is the proposal narrative, um, which is also, also titled your three-year plan. As a requirement of the Title II formula program, states are required to submit a three-year plan for implementation of the Title II funding. The proposal narrative three-year plan should be submitted as an attachment in Just Grants. The attached document should be double spaced using a standard 12 point Times New Roman font, have no less than one inch margins, and should not exceed 30 pages. Pages should be numbered and submitted as an attachment. So I know that you know 30 pages can seem um, a bit daunting for all the, especially for all of the information that needs to be placed in your three-year plans. Um, and so we understand, we understand that, and you are able to upload appendices um, or link to different information. 
there's a caveat with linking in your in your plan or in the appendices. Um, just be mindful if you're attaching uh, links that are internal to your organization's uh, platform. Just be mindful that your program manager is going to need to uh, be able to access that information. And if we don't have access to your internal uh, servers and things of that nature, it can pose for a, a bit of a, a challenge when we're in the review process. So definitely just be mindful of the links that you do put place in your uh, plan or in the appendices, but you can use those the appendices as uh, support supporting documentation for the three year plan. The project design and implementation. So what does your narrative consist of? Uh, many of you are familiar with the crime analysis portion of the three year plan. The narrative should include a description of the issue or statement of the problem. This section of the plan must provide an analysis of juvenile delinquency problems in and the juvenile delinquency control and delinquency prevention needs of the state. This is including any geographical area which in which a Native American tribe has jurisdiction. So one thing to point out with uh, your crime analysis portion of your three year plan um, is that the analysis must be based on the most recent data available by county, parish, or city. So we do understand um, and are very um, uh, aware of the impact of last year's uh, the, the COVID uh, pa pandemic that impacted so many of us, um, personally, professionally, all over. So we understand that and we understand the impact on day-to-day -day operations as well. So we understand that 2020 data uh, you know, we're asking for the most recent, but we understand that that organizations may or may not um, have complete or accurate 2020 data. So we, what we want to do is make sure that we emphasize it's your most recent data available by the county, parish, or city. Your project design and implementation. In this section, states are to describe the activities, services, and projects proposed over the course of the three-year plan to attain each goal and its subsidiary objectives. The narrative should be specific and concrete in elaborating how the state will achieve the goals and objectives. And just emphasizing specific and concrete, um, really tying it back to the goals and objectives and some of the information you've provided the data in your crime analysis. Requirements for this portion of the narrative can be found in the Juvenile Justice Reform Act, the JJRA 34 USC 11133A. And just to note here, those requirements uh, in previous uh, last year uh, were submitted in the addendum. Those requirements will now be placed in your three year plan. Goals, objectives, and performance measures. Within the narrative, you should describe the goals and objectives derived from the crime analysis and respond to the identified needs and problems. A couple things to remember for the objectives. They have to be specific, actionable, and quantifiable statements that define each goal. This section of the narrative should one, describe the state's goals and objectives, two, indicate the priority ranking for each goal, and three, briefly explain how the state proposes to accomplish, uh, accomplish them. Award recipients will be required to submit performance measurement data and performance reports annually. And I know uh, many of you have received communications from OJJDP regarding the new performance measures, which can be found on OJJDP's website. And it's under the performance measure tab. You can find that literally, you can go directly to the funding. You would go to home funding and then performance measures and all the information regarding the new Title II performance measures, and also where you will be reporting. I know that there um, is 
you know, could be some confusion on what system you're reporting in, but uh, definitely please check the website to, to get exactly where uh, all the information regarding the new performance measures, as well as which system, whether it's the PMT or the or just grants you will be submitting in for which reporting reporting period. So with that, that closes out some of the the, the closes out the narrative portion of the solicitation. I am going to kick it over to my colleague Marissa Harris, and she's going to walk through the budget worksheet and some of the budget narrative information required. Thanks, Nicole. Hello, everyone. I will be sharing information regarding the budget information. That information can be accessed on pages seven and eight of the FY21 solicitation. Applicants are to present total federal funds the state plans to use in each program area from its formula grant allocation along with any funds used to support the match required for any federal funds used for planning and administration. Applicants are to provide a budget that is complete, allowable, cost-effective in relation to your proposed activities, and provide a supporting narrative to link the cost to your program objectives. The budget for the new award period for FY21, four-year budget period, October 1st, 2021 through September 30th, 2025. Your budget worksheet um, can be accessed from a link within the solicitation as far as the formatting, but it requires you to include allocations. Under the JJ, JJDPA Act, you are required to, unless you receive a waiver from the administrator, to provide for at least 66 two thirds of your funds to be passed through to um, local units of government. Also under the plan, 75% of your funds should be, award, should be allocated under 111329. And those funds should be made available also to local units of government um, through grants and contracts with priority and funding given to entities meeting the criteria for evidence-based and promising programs. I encourage all states to review the section under 111-339A to re review the requirements and how you should diversify your funds under the 75%. Also, as a requirement, you are to allocate um, and provide a match requirement. States shall use no more than 10% of their formula funds for planning and administration. Also, states are required to match this in cash up to 10% of, of your program and administration portion of your budget. Also, under the um, Act requires your SAG allocation. Currently, states and territories may use no more than 5% of their annual allocation to, to assist their state SAG and carrying out the activities required under 1113A. Also, Native American pass due. The required amount of your Native American tribal pass due represents the minimum amount a state must pass through to tribes that perform law enforcement functions as determined by the Secretary of Interior and that agreed to attempt to comply with the core requirements. As indicated previously, applicants are to submit their budget format in the budget format sample that's listed in the FY21 solicitation. This can be accessed through the hyperlink that's within the solicitation. Applicants also encouraged to place a P by your 66 two thirds pass through requirement if you're not requesting a waiver. Also, you should also indicate um, any other activities that are going to support um, support your other programming requirements under the 75 percent. And finally, every applicant must submit a narrative that clearly describes the activities that are within your three-year plan. Your budget narr narrative 
should clearly explain why it is necessary um, and the purpose of all of your program um, activities within your budget. It should be robust. It should support your crime analysis as well as your um, goals and objectives within your three-year plan. And I'm going to turn it back over to Cara. Thank you, Marissa. So after you have submitted your application and just grants, the next step is the OJ Office of Justice Programs Application Review process. And during this process, we look to make sure that the information presented is reasonable, understandable, measurable, achievable, and consistent with the solicitation. And also the cost principles that are within 2 CFR 200, those costs must be, again, allocable, allowable, reasonable, and consistent. consistent. Among other things to help assess whether an applicant that has one or more prior federal awards has a satisfactory record with respect to performance, integrity, and business ethics, OJP checks whether the applicant is listed in SAM as excluded from receiving a federal award. Where to apply? So the first step in this process is you have to apply through grants.gov. The deadline for that, again, is Tuesday, June 29th, 1159 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you click on this link on how to, to apply, they have desk guides, FAQ videos, a step-by-step -step outline on how to apply in grants.gov. Also, just grants. As you know, just grants is our new grants management system. And the deadline to submit your application in Just Grants is July 13, 2020, 11.59 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I'm going to, in the chat box, um, put in a link that is the, has all the training resources for Just Grants that shows you how to submit an application, how to upload specific documents. There's some FAQs, videos, desk guides, desk guides, and also there's a Just Grants help desk. And I know it's in the chat box, one of the um, recipients, I believe, have reached out to Just Grants and they haven't had any luck on getting the issues re resolved. If you have anything like that, please make sure that your assigned program manager is aware of that issue in case we have to elevate it up to leadership so we could get, um, get, the, get it rectified before the deadline. So if for whatever reason, you see you can't get help through the Just Grants help desk, please reach out to your assigned program manager and we'll see what we can um, do on our end. Okay. And then if you are have any technical issues with grants.gov, you can call them, um, you can send them an email as you know, grants.gov is separate from just grants. Um, we have very limited knowledge on how grants.gov operates, so I highly recommend reaching out to them first via email or telephone. They are usually very responsive um, in their replies by email. And then here is our resource um, page. Everything that is under the legislation, for example, the Juvenile Justice Delinquency Prevention Act reauthorization 2018, the red line version, the FY 2021 Title II solicitation, the regulation of 28 CFR Part 31 regulation and 2 CFR Part 200. These resources um, most likely heavily likely recommend you use when you're filling out your FY2021 Title II Formula Grant Program application. Also, we have some grant writing tips. We have some through bja.gov's website, also on ojp.gov's website, and grants.gov has some very user-friendly tips on how to apply um, for a grant. 
And I just want to add also with um, just just grants to help desk. To my knowledge, they are open Monday through Friday from 7 a.m. Eastern Standard Time to 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and also on the weekends from I believe 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time to 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I will now turn it back over to William. All right, great. Thank you very much. And um, to our audience members who are uh, submitting questions, please continue to submit your questions for today's web event. Make sure that you are sending your questions to either everyone or all panelists. Um, here's the next slide, just as a quick reminder to folks of um, where you can access that URL um, for the uh, just grants as well. Um, and then really quickly, I'm going to go ahead and uh, put up the next slide uh, for our Q&A moderation. Uh, please note to the audience, we will attempt to get to all of the questions uh, that have come in today. However, if any questions are not answered, um, or if you have a question that comes up after the web event, please note that we are encouraging you to please send those questions to the NCJRS Response Center, uh, where you can see the phone number here, and of course you can email them there as well. Um, so our first question that we have, uh, and to our uh, panelists, please note that these questions are coming up in regards to the application requirements. So these next set of questions will all be around requirements. Um, is the disclosure of lobbying activities form uh, different than the SFLLL submitted on grants.gov, or is it just looking to see that it transfers over? Correct. So it is the same form, the SFLLL form that is submitted. You submit your SF424 in grants.gov as well as the disclosure of lobbying uh, form. Okay, great. Um, and really quickly to someone who just messaged me uh, directly, yes, please note that we are recording today's web event and it may be recorded on the JDT's multimedia page. I'll go over that a little bit later on um, when we do our closeout for today's web event. But yes, we are indeed recording this um, webinar. Okay, um, the next question that came in, uh, can we attach appendixes, appendices uh, with our narrative to support information or would these count towards the 30 pages? So your appendix does not count towards your 30 pages. Your state plan, the requirement is to have only a maximum of 30 pages. So if you are uh, referencing other information, you can use that, um, the appendices uh, to expound upon certain areas within your plan, but it is not a part, the appendices is not a part of that 30 page limit. Okay. Our next question here, can you explain why uh, you're asking for city, county, or parish data when projects may be statewide or include multiple cities and or county projects selected through a competitive process? Okay, so I'm, I don't, I'm not sure I fully understand the question, and, and maybe we can we can connect directly with whoever the attendee is that answered it, uh, asked the question. But uh, states, you, you must provide a minimum of three years of recent data um, for the characteristics, um, and which typically are available by the county, parish, or city. Um, and so, if this information is not available. States um, can also describe the problem in obtaining that data in their plans and their plan to rectify that situation um, and discussing how they will uh, resource efforts to obtain the information. So maybe we can we can connect with that attendee to get more information or to delve deeper into her specific question. But um, at this point, it is required. The states must provide a minimum of three years of recent date. Okay. Let's see. Would you provide clarification? And, and my colleagues at design? OJJD, please. Oh, sorry, William. Um, please feel free to jump in here um, if you if you have anything else to add as well. Okay. 
Um, you may have uh, mentioned this uh, earlier in the presentation, Nicole, but I, it looks like someone mentioned, would you provide clarification, additional information on products and deliverables required in the project abstract? Can you repeat that question, William? Uh, yes, uh, it looks like they were asking for clarification or additional information on products and deliverables required in the project abstract. Yep, so, so like we did go through exactly the uh, requirements of the pro project abstract and it's also provided in the solicitation. So if you want to go back and uh, double check the actual solicitation documentation, it outlines all of what's required in the 400 page, uh, 400 uh, character limit and things of that nature. Okay, um, it looks like another abstract, uh, or excuse me, requirement related question here. Uh, do you and have to fill I out? I think some of those came in before I got to the abstract. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you before I got to the abstract slide. So they may have gotten answered. Um, they just asked the question a little early in the presentation. Oh yeah, sure, sure. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And then it looks like a clarifying question of, uh, do you have to fill out hard copy documents like disclosure of pending applications or just certify those in grants, just grants, or do you guys prefer both? The certifying of the pending applications will need to be submitted as a, an attachment in just grants. Grants.gov does not have that fillable form. It does not have a fillable form for that specifically. And as Cara mentioned, I think it was Cara that mentioned all of the listed required documents for each system can be found on OJJDP's website as well as the solicitation page, uh, web, web page. And I think we might have gotten the link put in the chat for you all to see it. We tried to do a good job because we understand that you all are working in two different systems this year. Um, we definitely understand kind of the back and forth with that. So we outlined which documents go in which system. So um, hopefully that can kind of outline for you on the page. And I think we even put a screenshot of it um, to, to give you an idea of what's supposed to be required. And you can build a let list and a checklist from that, as well as we also provided a checklist of all the required um, documentation and information at the end of the solicitation, which is the normal OJP, OJJDP, uh, application submission checklist. So definitely I would, I would refer to those first. And then if you have additional questions, we can always um, discuss them. But I know for sure that within grants.gov, that's the first step into the process. So you sub submit your registration in grants.gov, you fill out the SF 424, you fill out uh, other forms required, and that you're then going to get a link from just grants inviting you to apply within just grants so that's how your the communication is being uh, your application is being initiated within just grants okay thank you nicole um mm -hmm. the next set of questions it looks like these are uh related to the budget worksheets or anything budget related and so uh the next few questions here will be uh on that subject area. Um, okay. It looks like someone wanted some clarification on the new budget worksheet. Uh, we only have to, do we only have to submit the new format once we receive notification of our award or know about our allocations? Uh, can we use an Excel budget worksheet and a word narrative for the initial submission? Yes, so this is your, we're operating with the same uh, in the same way as as previous years here. You're just submitting a uh, standard or your estimated projected projected budget in just grants at this point. And at a later date, once allocations are made and awards um, are made, you will be able to submit uh, resubmit your budget for review and then subsequently go through the uh, conditions and things of that nature. So yes, it is the same process. It's it. it doesn't need, need to be a final, final budget. Um, so yes, that is that is correct. Okay, another uh, clarification question around budget. 
uh, an individual said that the budget has program areas, but not the AW uh, that they are tied to. Can you provide that on a revised PDF? For example, um, O and N don't seem to be listed clearly. They, they provide that example saying that O and N didn't seem to be listed clearly. Okay, and I think my colleague Marissa is going to jump in here. So, yeah, and you may be um, on mute. Just to, yeah, um, uh, just to clarify, could you repeat that, William? Yes, um, so. Uh, and I'm sorry, I'm reading it verbatim as it came in. And if the individual who asked if you want to clarify a little more, uh, you can feel free to type in the chat. Uh, budget has program areas, but not the AW that they are tied to. Can you provide that on a revised PDF? Um, they wanted clarification on that. And they gave an example saying, example, O and N don't seem to be listed clearly. So under this under the seventy five percent um states are to um give priority to these particular program areas with this particular criteria and evidence base. Um and if, if you guys still have your red book of your red line version of the JJP Act, um under the JJRA twenty eighteen, um that that referring to um, those specific community-based or specific programming that diversifies your um, your 75%. Um, and I believe it goes from pages um, 42 through um, 47 specifically. So your budget this year is gonna be, um, have to support with those. So you just can't say community-based. You have to be very specific, for, for example, a is community-based alternatives, including home-based alternatives to incarceration and institutionalization, including for um, status offenders is I, um, for one, for two, it's for youth needing residential placement, or for three, for youth needing specialized, intensive, and comprehensive services. So if your intentions are to do community-based that's focused on um, status offenders or residential placement or providing some type of alternative um, comprehensive program within that area, you would list A and go into depth um, about those services. Another example, you were gonna use um, G is for programs to ensure that you have access to appropriate legal representation. You would state that ensure that these programs, when you're giving your justification, you're ensuring that if you're gonna be passing money out to communities or if you're gonna be doing programs, um, you're just ensuring that those emphasis and what's listed under those letters, your programming is gonna address those particular populations, those special demographics, those particular services and everything. H is another example where it goes into counseling training and mentoring services that are gonna support academic tutoring and vocational training. You're, again, you're ensuring that your program services activities, your subaward, subcontract, subcontractors, subawardees understand um, what are the requirements within each letter. Um, and it's just not just a broad community base. They're very intentional and very specific and diversified when it comes to the intention of what it intends. Um, also, with under 75%, um, DSO does not count um, diversion, um, Indian tribal programs, jail removal, juvenile justice systems improvement, um, PNA can't count, red activities can't count as well, or reducing probation officer caseloads, your rural area programs, and separation and SAG. But you can count your compliance um, monitoring will count towards that. Thank, thank you, Marissa. Yes, uh, <laughs> in, in that. Um, hey, William, so sorry. Don't mean to interrupt, but I just want to piggyback off of the great information that Marissa just gave. I know it sounds like a lot, um, but we are planning to have a budget training once awards are made um, later on down the line. So, you know, 
definitely, of course, always consider the requirements of your budget and, and all of that information, but we will also provide uh, more training later at a later date. Thank you, Nicole. And yes, um, Marissa, too, it sounded like you answered actually one of the questions related. Um, someone did ask, is it correct that the 75% does not include RED um, and juvenile justice system improvement? That is correct. And I'm typing a response in the box as well. Okay, <laughs> thank you. Okay, um, let's see the next question here. Um, someone asked for an example of products and deliverables required. They asked if they could get an example um, of products and deliverables required. I'm thinking you may need a little bit, flesh that question out a little bit. Yeah, exactly sure yeah. Um, the individual who wrote that, if you could provide a little bit more uh, context there. Um, the next question here, can you provide more clarification on how the 33 requirements, formerly Appendix I, should be included in the 30-page narrative? Uh, the, as our Appendix I is 18 pages alone. Yes, so as far as giving the descriptives, OJJDP, we, we try not to be as prescriptive as far as how you build your state plan. Um, but those requirements are required to be in within your state plan. And so within the project uh, implementation, project design and implementation section is where we list out those requirements and reference those requirements in the solicitation. So hopefully that gives you an idea. Okay. Um, so the next few questions here are some technical technical questions related to uh, just grants or grants.gov. Um, how do we know if we have been approved in grants.gov? Yep. So you should have received a uh, an email confirmation from grants.gov once you processed your application there initially. So um, that that should have been a piece of the, the the system that sends you a notification. If you didn't get that, I would definitely contact the grants.gov help desk. And so sorry if you all are hearing a little bit of background noise. Um, it's outside of my home, but. I would definitely contact grants.gov first um, to ensure that your application processed through, that you were registered correctly in the grants.gov, um, and that the systems are communicating. And then if you're still not receiving the confirmations, I would go uh, and, and tap into the help desk or your program manager is always a very uh, reliable resource for you to tap into as far as getting some some help with uh, uh, just grants and, and uh, you know, maybe escalating the issue, uh, but I would definitely uh, make sure that you're receiving that confirmation email because also just to add a point here, that also requires you to be the correct person registered to submit the application. So ensuring all your contact information is in just grants and up to date. These were one of the, some of the things that we kind of clued into a couple months ago when we were preparing for the solicitation to open. We, we really tap, tapped into update just grants, make sure all of your contacts are, are updated, make sure email addresses are going to the have are for the correct person, all of that good stuff. That's why we tried to do some of that pre-work so that now you can just kind of focus on step by step by step how to submit the, the application. So hopefully that helps a little bit, but you should have received an email from grants.gov ultimately and then subsequently just grants. Okay. The next um, technical question here, are electronic signatures okay on certification forms for those working remotely? So we'll have to get back to you on that because it's a great, great question. Um, I believe they, the requirement is what signatures, but the fact that we are in a, a that we're all working remotely, it's definitely a consideration. So we'll definitely follow up with that. 
um, and make sure that everyone understands uh, whether or not they can submit a uh, a electronic signature, unless my colleagues at J OJJDP want to jump in here, but um, we will follow up with that response. Okay. Um, looks like more questions are coming in here. Uh, again, to the audience, uh, please continue to submit your questions. We'll be getting to those shortly. Remember, select uh, either everyone or all panelists when you're receiving your question, uh, sending your question in. Um, I did get a couple of uh, direct messages that came in from folks in regards to uh, availability of the handout. I did share that file earlier, but if you didn't receive that, I'm now placing in the chat the location where you can access it through the Google Drive there. So if you are unable to access the PDF of the document um, from that file transfer that I shared, I did just place the Google Drive link where you can simply click on that link or you can copy and paste it in the um, in a browser of your choice, preferably Chrome, and you'll be able to get access to that um, item there. Uh, and then for individuals who, again, asked uh, again about the recording, uh, I'm going to put inside of the chat here the link where you can access OJJDP's multimedia page. Uh, this is where um, the solicitation recording may be uh, located after once upon the conclusion of today's web event. And so please note that um, this is uh, accessible through OJJDP's multimedia page uh, and through their YouTube page. So I went ahead and put that in the chat for everyone as well uh, for those who asked. Okay, um, so back to the questions related to the content. Um, Nicole, it looks like hey, we William. did get a clarify. Oh, sorry, my apologies. Yes. No, no, no. It's it's my apologies. I'm jumping in here because we're actively working. Um, so I do want to clarify. I just got confirmation from from the big boss, Dr. Tanine Bradford. Um, yes, electronic signature. That that's if that's the only way that you're able to certify on these on the forms. You are able to submit that. So clarifying that that one point from earlier. Electronic signatures are okay. Okay. Well, that was a fast turnaround there, Nicole. <laughs> Thank you for Gotta move the fast. Gotta move fast. Want to keep all the right information to, to folks on the call today. So. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, indeed, indeed. Um, so earlier there was a clarifying question uh, that came in from an individual. Uh, they look, it looks like they asked, uh, who is the correct person slash assigned user role to register in grants.gov on behalf of a state? So that person would be whoever the required person is submitting the application overall. So typically it's uh, in this can be can differ for each organization or each state, but it's typically the JJ specialist who's submitting the application overall. So they'll be the ones initiating the application within grants.gov subsequently into just grants. And then um, I know that there are times in the once we get into the compliance piece on Thursday, uh, a lot of the compliance monitors work through that that portion of the of the solicitation application. So um, it just it depends on who your organization is assigning that role to. But I would also double check uh, your roles in just grants to ensure that the correct person is assigned there as well, because I believe. Um, you can be registered and have filled out a profile in grants.gov, but it, if you're not connected to uh, the, the roles within just grants, that person, whoever's in that role would receive the email confirmation and that information. So, like I said, double check um, all of the resources and we're, we're also planning to send out um, in the coming week more information on step by step by step for just grants. We understand it's all new. It's very new for us as well, but we want to make sure that we're being clear and we're, we're giving you all the specific steps and guidance that you need to get through this process because, you know, we don't we understand there are deadlines and things processing that you all need to do on your end for certain signature forms and things like that. So we will definitely uh, send out a, a formalized um, list of steps, resources, 
Uh, it includes job aids and different information to help you move through each of the different systems. Um, so that'll maybe help with deadlines. But the one thing I really, really do want to stress is that grants.gov, there's a grants.gov deadline, June 29th. We are officially two weeks from that deadline. So you really want to make sure you go ahead and start that process at the very least, because at that point, you'll be able to start your application in Just Grants and actually move through submitting your attachments and submitting your abstract and all of that information. So what's very critical is for you to start and initiate the, the application in grants.gov and move through um, move to move through into Just Grants. And that's June 29th. Um, so want to highlight that for everyone. Okay. Um, <clears throat> what are states, or excuse me, what are examples of a state's products uh, and deliverable that OJDP is looking for to be addressed in the abstract? So we listed out all of the requirements within the abstract, and it's also the content in which we are specifically looking for as well in the solicitation. So if you want to check back to the solicitation, um, and I also reviewed it in the uh, earlier slides on the specific content we're looking for, um, that should help you with uh, drafting that, that area of the application. Okay. And there, um, let's see, was a question on allocation, but it looks like Marissa was able to address that allocation question in the chat here for- Awesome, uh, awesome teamwork. Thanks, Marissa. <laughs> uh, Marissa, anything, did you want to say anything in regards to uh, allocation at all, um, or what you provided in the chat was? Will suffice. They are they are currently for FY21 that that the link is provided. They are estimates as indicated in the message box for right now, and they are to use that for their holder. And then when final allocations are released um, to states, they will submit a final budget. Okay, great. Let's see. It looks like we. Haven't received any other new questions that have uh, come in yet, um, and so uh, Nicole, while we wait for more questions to come in, is there any other um, uh, things that you'd like to address the audience with, as far as any uh, closing or final thoughts, um, or as folks are maybe thinking of their questions or continue to submit the so, questions? Yeah, um, and you know, I'll. Defer if Tanine wants to close out and mention anything, um, she's more than welcome to. But I just wanted to just reiterate the importance of starting the application early. Um, I know, you know, we all are familiar with the time frame and typically for the solicitation. So, you know, you definitely want to submit your information and start working on the solicitation as soon as possible. And work really closely with your program manager as well as the NCJRS Response Center. They're amazing, they're very responsive. They'll route the questions to us. Um, and, you know, any questions that you have, please, please, please ask, because we want, we want to know. And I, I think I even saw a suggestion from someone in the chat, and I think it's a great one. We, we, we like to hear these type of things, you know, regarding a checklist of just the documents um, that are required in each system, even if it was just a blank checklist. We do provide a checklist at the end of the solicitation, but maybe that format is just um, not as helpful. So we appreciate some of the feedback we're getting as well. Um, and we're, we're trying to make this process um, as seamless as possible with the transition into Just Grants and with the two systems. So. Um, please understand that we are here to work with you and help you through this process. Um, so please, um, if you have questions, um, send them our way, um, tap into your program manager. We are, we are here to help. Um, Marissa, Cara, uh, Tameen, is there anything else you all want to emphasize um, from today's presentation?
No, Nicole, thank you. No, Nicole, thank you. All right. I think I think we're good to go, William. Um, it looks like a oh, uh, one attendee you, got uh, one. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, I don't know. Are you able to unmute Dr. Bradford? I think she wanted to mention something. Uh, let's see. Oh, it looks like she may have dropped out and dropped back in. Yeah, sure. Let me. Uh, okay. Let me see if I can grab her real quick. There we go. Dr. Raffer, uh, sorry, it looks like you dropped out, but you're back in and unmuted there. <laughs> okay, yep, thank you, multitasking. Um, so great job, <laughs> um, Nicole, Marissa, Cara, um, always thank you for all of these incredible themes. Um, again, I just want to make sure the field knows that we are working to get you what you need, um, different folks, um, need different levels of TA and assistance with getting um, through the application process. But, and I, I know I don't need to remind you all of, about how um, nuanced and complex Title II can be. It's a formula award. It should be simple, but it, it just, <laughs> it's not. And sometimes you get these systems and things that further complicate, um, you know, how we, how we process this. But it is our desire to make sure the money gets to you. Um, and so, you know, we'll work, we'll do whatever we can to try to make sure that you have a successful submission um, in the application. Um, we'll talk a little bit more, and I think there was a listserv that went out earlier today, and I know there's been a couple so far um, around the extension for uh, data and, and red requirements um, that, you know, if that's necessary. Um, so just pay attention to that. If you have any questions, certainly reach out to your program manager as well, but we, we, you know, in regards to, and just being transparent, in regards to the budget and some of the more tenuous items, we are, um, we're not going to be shy about making sure that, you know, we're, we're address those things. I think Nicole mentioned earlier that we'll have a budget training. We have not had one of those for the field in a long time, but we are getting uh, our act together in terms of uh, ensuring that we are following the act when it comes to budgets. And, uh, I, uh, I, I I frankly know that this is, you know, one of those uh, tense and uh, tenuous um, areas uh, for those of you who've been submitting budgets um, for a long time where we were not holding um, ourselves to the act in the law and, um, and, and, and that there were various um, and conflicting guidance around that um, in the past. I think we've, we've been cleaning it up in the last couple of years. But with that, with that said, with the eyes on the audit and the audit of the auditor, um, and, and many of you, you know, do uh, audit um, and have gone through many of them, we, we have to make sure that we are uh, administering uh, Title II credibly. That requires us to be able to have documentation that's clear that um, we're holding you uh, to the requirements. And when folks start peering in and wanting to auditors start looking into um, our work, um, we're able to clearly demonstrate that you all are meeting the requirements. And no one wants to be in a situation, no state or entity or even ourselves, where um, you come along and you, and you believe you've been doing something right, and then suddenly it's I gotcha and um, you weren't following or doing something, and now money. Um, is, is in question. Uh, uh, we want to try to get ahead of all of those things right now. Uh, part of the JJRA um, uh, um, uh, required that OJDP um, and OJP receive um, um, a war audit and, and reviews. And as that occurs, um, fortunately for us, uh, but unfortunately at times we find that that um, maybe something was amiss or uh, we weren't accurately um, providing guidance. And so um, as long as, um, you know, uh, and as, as long as we can get it right, we have time to get it right, we, we will, and, and that will make things a bit uncomfortable. And I think, you know, the budget area is certainly one of those things. So we will and are committed to having um, a series of uh, training, working sessions um, to get you through uh, the budget uh, and the budget requirements and help um, navigate that process once we get the awards out. And we will be very deliberate uh, about those things. In the meantime, um, you know, once you get your submission in, and, and, and uh, we're not going to, to uh, be flippant if, if there's something amiss, 
um, once you get your submission in, we certainly will try to, to get back with you and make sure that you um, submit the accurate requirements or information so that um, we're not in the way um, and we're not helping you um, get those things in. You know, we, we certainly don't have, you know, a lot of time to do it, but we will, we will make sure that we're committed to, to uh, change requests and things like that if we find something that's all. So feel assured that um, it's a little bit different than a competitive award where we are certainly trying to make sure you get you get it right um, so that we are able to award you. That's, you know, the majority of the business that we're in and we want to get we want to get it right. So again, um, thanks uh, to my entire team for pulling this together. Impact, William, great to, to be back in partnership with you um, and making sure that we have, um, you know, professionally run and efficiently run um, uh, solicitation webinars. Uh, appreciate your time today. And if there's any other questions, I'm sure my team will handle it. Thanks. Hey. Thank you, Dr. Reifer. Um and thank you to everyone. And uh, with that being said, um, before we in just a few last minute items uh, to keep in mind for folks uh, on your screen here, you'll see the contact information where you can reach out to uh, OJJDP's intact through the uh, website here and also uh, be sure to sign up for our listserv to learn more about web events that we have and uh, be sure to check us out on Facebook at OJJDP TTA. Um, please note that uh, if you would like to get in contact with OJJDP's help desk or learn more about the Juve Just uh, solicitation and upcoming events, please note that uh, the information in regard regarding those um, resources is available on this slide. Uh, so please be sure to uh, access uh, inside of your PDF the URL links and the resources to uh, get access to those items. Uh, do you have a training? or technical assistance need? Uh, well, if so, we are asking for you to please submit a request uh, for the help desk via OJJDP's TTA 360 platform. The platform can be accessed through the URL link uh, displayed on this slide here. As a reminder, uh, and I put this in the chat as well, uh, please note that you can get access to OJJDP's multimedia page uh, where you can view uh, other webinars on juvenile justice and child victimization prevention related topics. If you would like to get access to any supporting materials, you can do so through the OJJDP TTA help desk uh, at the email address located on this slide. And uh, last but certainly not least, and we'll put this link as well in the chat for folks, uh, please join us for part two of this uh, solicitation webinar where we will go over the compliance side of this particular um, grant solicitation webinar. So uh, my co-host has put the link to that webinar. Uh, if you have not registered for that yet, be sure to do so now. And we would love for you all to um, attend and be available for part two. Please note the disclaimer slide on here uh, where OJDP attempts to make, uh, attempts to assure materials presented during this solicitation webinar are accurate. However, in case of errors, conflicts, or omissions, uh, the information requirements contained within the posted written solicitation shall take precedence. Um, and then last but certainly not least, um, before everyone, uh, exits today's poll, we, uh, today's web event, we do have one last poll for everyone. And we basically want to know, how do you plan to apply the knowledge that you've learned uh, today? Um, in this poll, please note that it is multiple select. So you do have options to select any of the items here uh, listed from A through J. So please let us know, how do you plan to apply the information that you've learned today? That being said, I'll go ahead and uh, close out today's web event. Again, thank you to our presenters. Uh, thank you to OJDP for uh, a wonderful grant solicitation webinar. Uh, and thank you to our audience for attending today. Everyone take care and have a wonderful afternoon. Thank you.